is now well structured and it's a very recognized school in the whole country. Alpha Khan, principal of the school, acknowledged the fact that numerous developments have taken shape in the school since its establishment in 1997. In fact, students of the first batch of the senior secondary school are now waiting for their worst results. And I'm sure the community is equally grateful and the country is equally grateful to you, Honorable Mayor, but more so to the government of the Republic of the Gambia under the able leadership of His Excellency the President, Dr. Alhaji Professor Yaya AJJ Jame. Uh, we are once more on behalf of the Board of Governors, on behalf of my staff and my humble self. I'd like to thank you for all your support and your foresight in making sure that um, education in this school uh, goes from strength to strength. And the academic successes registered by the school on Alpha Khan and his staff, according to Mayor Kohli, is what motivated them to continue rendering their support, which culminated in the senior secondary school. The principal took the delegation on a conducted tour of some of the school facilities, including the resource center, library, computer lab, canteen, borehole, as well as the biology and agri labs under construction. With three vice principals who help in the day-to-day -day running of the academy, Khan is proud of the exploits of his school in the Gambia's academic landscape. Several years, I cannot, but each time the results of the Becky are out, my students will excel. And we are invited by um, Trust Bank, the Gambia, um, to receive prizes at the Atlantic Hotel and so on. And if you were to be in my office, you'll see the certificates of those achievements. But this is the first year we've done the worst. We're hoping the results would be good. Mayor Yankuba Kuali was impressed after the visit. Very good. Uh, looking at the school, I know uh, you cannot be compared with any other school in this country right now. Uh, looking at the structures that are put in place and, uh, the, and uh, what makes me more happy is about what uh, the president is championing right now in education, that is science. And I think uh, making our senior secondary school to be entirely science, you know, academy, I think uh, that would, we would love at one day to have a scientist that, you know, that emerge from, 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 from our school. From the 22nd July Academy, the delegation proceeded to Talendi Market, where they met Chernobari. And uh, sometime last year or so, he came to us to sell the idea that he wants to contribute to the development of the market. And uh, within the spirit of public-private partnership, we thought this to be a beautiful idea, and we entered into an MOU with him. And then he constructed this um, uh, facility out here. He's going to be housed here himself, and then the rest of the shops will be rented out to those who are occupying the, those places. And we're going to give him a tax break up to, up to seven years, you know, after which he would start paying regular rent. Chernobari, who first came to the Gambia in 1998, said his contributions to the National Development course were inspired by the wealth he was able to make here, coupled with the love he has for the country and her people. Vegetable vendors on the Latikuna Highway were recently asked to vacate for safety concerns associated with the congestion created by vehicles that ply the highway. For this reason, the KMC top Chileans visited Abuko and Joshua markets to show the vast land that could be used instead of congested pavements or the old Jason market where we are now, or even Marshangela in London Corner. These are solid structures that the council has hugely invested in, but they are being hugely underutilized. So we are asking them, we are appealing to them to get back to these markets and do business, right? In as much as people need their goods, they'll find them wherever they are. For safety purposes also, I think is. Yeah, and for safety purposes as well, because we have had, we have had incidents where, you know, uh, women at, at, at Latikunda Highway were hit by vehicles. You know, we've had um, reports of several accidents at that place. And then we came up with a, with a joint team with the central police and even the fire service and other security agencies to ensure that they are no longer exposed to those kind of dangers. KMC officials say the mandate of the council transcends tax collection and the provision of social services. Town planning, they maintain, is an integral part of the council and that the public is urged to cooperate in this endeavor. Farmer of Ofana, GRTS.
A former teacher at the St. John School for the Deaf charged with rape has been acquitted by the Special Criminal Court. The trial of Allah Jinjai could not proceed because of lack of credible evidence. Epa Majata was following proceedings and he now reports. Allah Jinjai was arraigned on the 20th of April 2011 on a single charge of rape which he denied. Prosecutors alleged that the accused person, who is a teacher at the St. John School for the Deaf, raped a student attending the school who is partially deaf and dumb as well. According to the mother of the girl and false prosecution witness, her daughter returned late from school on the 10th of February 2011. Offended by this, she scolded her and promised to stop her schooling, which she did for two days before the girl informed her that the reason for her late return from school was because the accused person had held her back in his room where he forcefully had sexual intercourse with her. The matter was subsequently reported to the deputy principal of the school who took the girl to a doctor the next day. A medical report was consequently issued by the Royal Victoria Teaching Hospital who examined her. The medical report is in evidence as Exhibit P3. Several other witnesses, including the alleged victim, also testified in the trial, yet the 19-year-old girl recalled the month of the incident and failed to remember the year it occurred. She told the court that the accused invited her to his house to teach her sign language, but when she got there, the teacher closed the door and forcefully raped her. On the other hand, the accused person strongly denied the accusation on oath, racing an alibi in his cautionary statement. He adjudged that the girl has never been to his house and doesn't know where he lives. Prosecutors had urged the court to convict the accused and hold him for defilement as an alternative relying on the evidence adduced and the medical report to establish carnal knowledge, despite admitting to contradictions in their case. Defense had, however, raised serious reservations on the guilt of the accused, arguing the absence of vital exhibits never tendered in court. In his examination of the evidence before the court, Justice Nkea noted the contradictions in prosecution's case, especially in the testimony of the alleged victim who seemed to forget the year and setting of the incident despite her evidence that the accused took her to his house and raped her. Nkea revealed that her witness statement is a direct contradiction of her testimony before the court while asserting the genuine doubts he reserves as to whether it is the accused and no one else who had carnal knowledge of the girl. In law, when doubts are registered, they are resolved in favor of the accused, according to Justice Nkea, who consequently acquitted and discharged the accused person for lack of credible evidence. In a different and separate matter, at the same court, Dudugai was sentenced to death by Justice Emmanuel Nkea, who found him guilty of murder for causing the death of one Babukar Sen by stabbing him in the chest with a pair of scissors. Guy had initially denied the charges which led to the trial at the Special Criminal Court where prosecutors presented four witnesses and tendered seven exhibits in support of the indictment. The accused gave evidence in his defense as a lone witness and tendered no exhibit. According to the evidence adduced, the accused was involved in a wrangle with a tenant in his father's compound when the deceased came and instructed him to beat up the accused who was insulting the tenant. As the deceased left for the compound, the accused engaged him in a fight and in the process stabbed Babakar Sen on the chest with scissors. The pathological report describes the wound as deeply penetrating, extending to the heart and pericardium. The nature of the injuries clearly showed the use of lethal weapon, indicating the intention to cause grievous bodily harm or death. There is no evidence that the deceased was armed or that he attacked the accused with any object at all. Rather, there is unchallenged evidence to show that the accused was pointlessly aggressive that morning, Justice Nkea stated, and consequently found the accused guilty as charged. In the mitigation which followed, lawyer Sisoho asked the court to temper justice with mercy on the convict, whom he described as a young man and a first offender. In his sentence, Justice Nkea said life is sacred and must be respected. We do not bring ourselves to this wall and should only depart by God's will, not by the brute force of man, especially a person who should show you love, according to the presiding judge, while sentencing Dudu Guy to death. After praying for God's mercy on his soul, Justice Nkea reminded the dead row convict of his right to appeal. Ibrahim Ajata, GRTS. You can monitor GRTS Radio Live on our website at www.grts.gm. There we take our first break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. 
Recent clashes between Congolese forces and rebels in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo have forced over 200,000 civilians to leave for the country's north.